Hey guys, Daniel James here, and today we are going to be taking a look at Heaviosity's new library, Forzo. Uh, the way we're going to do this is slightly different. I haven't written the track for this one yet, but what we are going to be doing is going through the entire library, uh, taking a listen to all the articulations and patches that come with it, and then I'm going to go a little bit in depth with the UI and explain how it all works. So let's jump over to the other screen. Here we go. So. Heaviosity's Forzo came out. It's their new brass library. Um, it seems like they've gone for a very cinematic kind of uh, approach with this one. And uh, let's let's just stop talking about it. Let's, let's fucking listen to it. Okay, let's close this down. So first off, everybody knows this. My favorite motif is black and gold, so I'm loving this. So what we're going to do is it starts on the long sustain. So we'll, we'll start with that. So we've got 12 horns. Uh, I should probably mention the folders first. So it comes in traditional and evolved. So they have the, the brass designer, like they did with their old uh, string Novo library. But the uh, what we're going to do is we're going to go through the traditional ones, then we'll go through the uh, the evolved ones. Uh, so first off, uh, we're on horns, and in this little brackets here, you can see how many players they have. So this is 12 horns, always a good start. So let's start from the low velocity, and we'll go up to the high. Here we go. So first off, you guys know I fucking love 12 horns, and this sounds 12 hornish, <laughs> which is always something weird to say. So if any of you uh, remember the uh, Novo interface, this is very similar. So I will briefly go over all the controls on the front panel for you, but uh, most of it will be pretty self-explanatory. So as you can see, the big knob in the middle, this is like a heaviosity thing, having the big knob in the middle. Beautiful graphic on it, by the way. So this at the minute is just dynamics. In the uh, traditional patches, they are this big knob in the middle is the uh, dynamics. And you can, you can uh, limit it. You can limit the amount of dynamics, which is actually a very useful feature if you're doing you know, something soft and you want to have a full range of dynamics, but in the softer era, so area. So let's say, for example, um, you know, we're doing like a really loud thing, right? But we don't want it to go all the way down to zero. We can pull this dynamics knob here. Yeah, let's make it even louder. Actually, that didn't seem to do much, did it? There we go. So even down here, it's still like at an MF. And again, if we're doing something soft, say we're doing like a really romantic thing, and we want to have dynamics within that, but not go up to this, you know, because we don't want in a soft song, the horns going all the way up to fucking FFF. Which is an extremely useful feature. And of course, the dynamics curve, uh, you know, so depending on how how you do it it'll go louder quicker or you know louder slower so this is just 12 horns and as you can see they don't have legato this is actually one of the only problems i have with the libraries they don't have legato but they do have lots of sustains and like i said with the strings this is this library is more for the sound than it is the playability on some of the things And of course, I'm playing like six notes there, so there's way more than 12 players. So as you can see, we have also the velocity here, which means that uh, it will be, how do you describe this? It will be ratio divided, but now on velocity. So if I have it down, no matter what I play, it's gonna be like that. But if I turn it all the way up and then play soft, we get a soft note. And if I play hard, we get that. And the reason you'd wanna do something like that is if you wanted to.
So that way it allows you to like chord soft, but do melodies hard, you know. So that's a very useful feature. And of course we've got uh, like the envelope. So if you want to do some weird sound designy things, you know, you can do your attack, decay, sustain, release. We don't need to do any of that here. EQ, always useful. And as you can see, uh, there's the full close room and hall. So you can actually EQ each of the mics separately, but we'll get to the mics in a second. Uh, there's a filter. So if like you want to roll, say the, the room mic is too boomy for you, for example, you can do a high pass and, you know, cut out the, the bass signal in the room mic if you really want to. Uh, the mix. So this is the microphone setup. So at the minute we actually have uh, the mic set up like this. I'm just going to turn off my speaker a bit so I can hear it. And of course you can solo these. So this is just a close mic. Uh, this is just the room mic. And then of course this is the hall mic. And one cool thing they actually added is if I come up to here, so they have the snapshots. If you don't know what snapshots are, in contact, uh, I think it was like in version five point something, they added the ability for snapshots. I think it was version five. It was probably way earlier and I just never knew. But uh, what it allows you to do is they've included uh, the core patches, the extra, what would you, the extra articulations in the effects patches. So what I, what I tend to do is I just go to full mix only. It's usually lighter on the, on the, uh, Look, you see, this is only 149 megabytes loaded in. So I tend to just go full my, uh, full mix. And it's it tends to just be louder and more kind of just there, you know? And I trust their mixes. And if it's ever too much, I just come into the EQ and I just curve it to my liking. But anyway, so that's the basic. Oh, and of course, space. Sorry, performance and space. So this is... Uh, the performance, if you want to know what this is, it's basically the controller for the knob. So if I turn this on, wait, it should be, there we go. So you can build swells and stuff. And the range, you see that little dial there. So this is how much of it you want to, you know, if you want it to go from nothing to there, and let's set the rate to, you know. Very useful, and I mean, if you want to get creative with it, you know, put the put the fucker down to like I don't know eight steps. You would never do this, but you know, you have the ability, so why not? Why not give it a go? You know what I mean, lads. You know what I mean. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I mean, you would never do this. <laughs> I just felt like giving it a go. But anyway, so you can do those kinds of things. And of course, there's a noise gate. You know, if you want to do some weird kind of um, Michael Bay sounding <laughs> movie sounds. Anyway, so we're just going to turn that off for now. So that's the basic controls on the front panel. Uh, very, very easy. And again, it's like Novo. So now let's go back through some of the sounds. So now we're on staccato. Something worth mentioning, by the way, is I love that they added the uh, the the key switch names on the, uh, well, that's actually wrong, but it's wrong down here because that says F6. And that isn't F6. You lie. That's a C. <laughs> But anyway, so now we're on staccato. And these are velocity. And again, the velocity is ratio based on the mod wheel. So if you have the mod wheel all the way down, you know, nothing's going to come out. So you have to turn the mod wheel all the way up. 
Unless, of course, you're one of these freaks that doesn't like velocity on your staccatos, you can turn that off. And you can con and you can control it with the mod wheel like an animal. But it is possible. And here comes one of my favorite things. This works better on the trumpets and the trombones, but I'll show you this feature. In fact, no, fuck it. I'm going to show you this feature when we get to the trumpets <laughs> so that you get the full thing. So we have Porto, which is good. It's, you know, it's good for these kind of, it, it's an initial swell. Ah, fuck. So that's good for when you're doing like the melodies. Ba -ba -bam, ba -ba -bam. So you can do the, the key switch. Let me see. Is the key switch down here like it says? Or is it lying to me? They lied to me. That's not an F6. That's a C. Okay, so. Fuck. So if you're doing something like that, you can do the key switches. Uh, it would be easier to program. So let me just fucking program it. I'm, I'm being lazy. Let me program this shit. So what is it? It's like C minus something. Uh, okay. Okay. <laughs> okay, so let's go. Uh, let's put it on. Jeez, not 30 seconds. Let's go. Oh, fucking okay. 16th then. Jesus. Okay. Dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun. So let's say it was like that. So let's find where this fucking key switch actually is. So it's here. It's minus C1. I don't know why it says F6. Because it's not on F6, is it? But anyway, it's it's on it's down here on minus C1 at the minute. So let's put... So now it's going to do... Duh, duh. So that's staccato. And then the porto is good for doing these kinds of... And then we'll just drag this so that it's the same phrase. Okay, maybe I should have made that slower. Or we could just like da 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 da. And then we, of course we can drag these out, make them longer. Does that work? Yeah. Yeah, so you can make like those phrases. Which I love to do, of course, you guys know this. And then of course we can just copy that across. And that's that's really cool for making those kinds of phrases. The only thing I wish they did is that I wish the the um what's it called? The sustain was uh the long sustain had the same attack as the porto. Like if you could do a blend of them. Because obviously the porto dies out. You know, that's the point of it. It's like a marcato. Right? But the long sustain, so if I change this to the, it's not G6. So if I change this to the long sustain. Okay, I lied. It sounds, I don't know, the porto to me just sounds like it has the same attack as the staccato. You know, like it's it's a natural kind of uh, flow. Whereas this, feel, <laughs> it doesn't have the wah version that the old libraries used to have, but I wish it had the same, the exact same attack as the Porto. And then let's put this back up to speed. That's a weird glitch that my computer is doing today. <laughs> like it... The, like normally I double click that and it would load up the, the window, but my computer's fucked up at the minute, so I have to push enter. I don't know if you guys can tell the difference, but the attack on that is actually better, but I, I love it. I wonder what happens if we put it to a forsando. That kind of works too. Anyway, so yeah, so now we've got the sfor sforzato. <laughs> I'm really bad with the Italian naming. So this is... Uh, It kind of has a at the beginning. And I think it's good for doing these kinds of. Oh. And again, it sounds really nice down low. Uh, 
Um, someone in the chat room asked, what's the difference between legato and sustain? So legato has, uh, has recorded transitions between it or faked it, but it, normally when you go from one note to the other, it's a monophonic instrument but it has the actual recorded difference from going from, say, D to F. They will re literally record D to F, and that kind of slide between the notes is recorded and added to the instrument, whereas the sustain is just the notes being played. And sustains are usually used if you're chording, you know, like doing some chords and pads. Um, so they're usually better for doing the pad kind of things. They they were kind enough to add us a PPP sustain, which so they've just recorded the quiet articulation. So it has like some inner dynamics. Okay, so now we're on to uh, the crescendos. And the cool thing about the crescendos in this is, I don't know if you can see up here, so there's a new, um, you know, if we take a look at the top, so you see there's something we're going to look at with the trumpets, ignore that. Uh, so there's nothing up here for these, but when we get to the crescendos, it adds a tempo sync. So that tells us that this patch is tempo synced to whatever we're doing. Um, so let me just delete this. So it's a, it's a four bar, uh, sorry, a, a, a one bar rise. Again, just to double check that one, two, three, four, three, four, which is very useful if you're doing, you know, uh, doing a score. Usually like the crescendos are recorded, but not synced. So you have to kind of guess where they are. The way I usually do it is I render it out as audio, but uh, we can half time that. And of course we can half time, uh, double time it. So if you want like a quick aggressive one, and of course these are also on the mod wheel. You know, if you want to bring them down, you can add more of a crescendo to it or just keep it low. But keep in mind, they are recorded still. <laughs> they're recorded from like quiet to loud. So even if you turn the volume down, you're still getting the quiet to loud. You're just turning it down. Here we have a swell, again, tempo synced. Can half time that again, just give that a quick listen. Very regal sounding. Okay, so that's only part one of the horns. We're going to be here for a while, so get yourself a snack. Um, so now we're on to the, uh, the extra articulations. And again, I'm just going to go to the full mix. Keep in mind, all of these have uh, the close uh, room and the hall mics, but I like doing the full mix just because it's a nice, tidy way of doing things. So in, in, as well as the normal articulations per instrument, you also get extra articulations and effects articulation. So these are called waves. And they're kind of like sustains. They're like sustains, but with movement within them. Ooh. 
like waves. It's a very cool texture and they have the same thing but wide. So some of the inner voices here are panned. great for making these big overall brass kind of just feelings you know these textures now we have pulsing beats which is actually a, if i remember right i think it's tempo synced but it doesn't say it but so it's kind of like dun 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 i think it's tempo sync Again, the same thing. So that is tempo sync, but it's kind of like a rhythmic kind of bed. So. you can bring it down really quiet so if you just these kinds of extra articulations are good for that kind of textural in the background thing uh so random flutters are brrr. and here you see we've been introduced to a new control and this is the density control so let's just listen to it normally so a good way to play these so that you don't get the same randomness is just play them at random intervals And here we have a new control called density. And what this does to my ears is it makes it more dense. <laughs> so I think what it's doing is it's either adding more layers of it or it's, uh, but whatever it does, it makes it more dense. Like. So someone in the chat says, everything sounds good until you add it to your mix, then it's a muddy catastrophe. One cool thing that you can do if that is the case is you have built-in EQ. And of course, if you get muddy, you can choose the muddy frequencies and you can just carve them out nice and easy. So random flutters uh, wide is the same as the last patch, but again, spread out. So a very aggressive and wide sound. Random staccatos, you can probably guess what this is going to do. A very cool effect. You know, if you're doing some horror scores or something. Same thing, but wide. Beautiful. So now let's move on to the effects. So here we, here we got some cool uh, clusters. I'm gonna take this off EQ, it, it scares me. I'll put it on the mix, there we go. And these, these to my ears sound amazing, particularly for those horror scores, like down low, but up high. So <laughs> low in velocity, but high in um, note. Beautiful 
the sounding clusters. I, again, I love them up high. Dun, dun, dun. Which leads us into the cluster risers. And again, these are tempo synced, so. And again, if I want more volume, by the way, instead of turning up here, I still have some headroom on the uh, on the microphone here. And we have a uh, cluster swell, so it will rise and then fall. Cluster bend, so this is a cluster, but it bends. I mean, a lot of the names are kind of what they are. I mean, there's not much more I can say about them, but I can play them to you so you can hear them. Very creepy. Uh, seasick bends. I've always loved this tone. It's great. So like you're in a, particularly like in an action scene or something, something bad just happened in the scene. And you know, like our characters waking up after just being knocked down. Everything's on fire. You can't see the bad guy. sound and here we have the first of uh, a patch that appears in all the other ones well most of the other low ones at least the atonal pedals so these aren't notes these are almost like uh, random just sounds for like when you want to set that ominous mood What are the players doing? On the atonal bends, it sounds like they're more just kind of blowing through the instrument on the lowest kind of. That's how they'd be playing it, like really loose lips. And atonal means that they're just kind of playing random notes. Seasick bends are where they're, uh, they're playing notes, but they're kind of going between them within a set range. That's normally how aleatoric music, well, that's normally what it means, is you get like a, on the page, you will get instructions. You don't get the note. It's like you, the, the high limit is this, the low limit is this. I want you to kind of bend between these notes at random uh, to a click or follow the conductor's hand, you know, and then it's the interpretation of the players that turns into this kind of creepy sound of unsettledness. Something worth mentioning before we move on to the next instrument is uh, you see here, it says empty slot. Obviously, that's not going to change to an empty slot. But one of the cool things about this is if, say, you never use the, uh, you know, let's go, let's go back to the, uh, no, not that one. Let's go back to just the horns patch. Let's say we never, ever use the sforzato, right? We can actually swap that out. Say we wanted cluster crescendos. So we can actually set up a custom um, patch and save it as a, uh, what would you call it, a snapshot. So say we wanted these ones instead, you know, we can swap out whatever we want. Whoa, Jesus. Introspective moderate, thank you for the donation. I, I missed the message, but I'll check it later. Sorry about that, I was focusing. Um, so you can actually set up a custom, uh, you know, a custom, what would you call it, patch with all the, uh, all the articulations that you want to use or the ones you use the most. So you can set, like for those of you who have templates and you don't want to set up every single 
uh, patch within the library, you can just set up a single patch that has all the articulations that you want. Mm. This library doesn't provide them as separate, but if you wanted, uh, you could turn all these off. You know, if you really wanted to, you could turn all these ones off. And now this is just a staccato. Okay, so let's move on to the next patch. This is 12 horns again, but stopped. And if you don't know what stopped means, it means muted. So they have something in the bell. That's what she said. Uh, that basically blocks the, the sound horn so that it comes out. You'll, you'll recognize the tone. It's a very noir sound. It's, I, d I don't know how you describe it. It's like a nasally kind of tone. I've never been a fan personally of the stopped horn. But for those of you who are into this kind of noirish type music, it's good to have. So again, we have the tempo synced uh, crescendos. And this one doesn't have all the same articulations by the... Well, I think it does, actually. No, it just... Ex, so, yeah, this is just ex, uh, extra articulations. So the, the stopped horn doesn't have the full range of articulations, but it does have, uh, like, the waves. No. Let me just double-check that I'm not making that up. So the waves, again, is that kind of... It's like a sustain with built-in motion. And here we have some stopped clusters. Very lovely. Uh, cluster crescendos. Nice. It's a very hissy sound, isn't it? And then cluster swells. Okay, so let's move on to trumpets. So we're actually going to start the trumpets. Um, well, we'll start with the long sustain. We'll do that. Doesn't go up there. It's a very noble and regal sound. I like it. So yeah, this has my arts acoustic reverb. I just remembered that I still have that on. And of course we can add uh, reverb within the engine. It's an absolutely beautiful sound. And again, I'm just going to turn my reverb on because I like the way it sounds. It's arts acoustic reverb. OK, 
Okay, so now let's go to staccato. So I didn't mention this in the horns because I wanted to show you here. So staccato, again, velocity. So make sure you have the velocity all the way up. So it's got a nice snappy. Okay, so beautiful. Beautiful, but I don't know if you guys have noticed the controls at the top here, okay? So round robin, you can actually, Jesus, that always scares me. Do you need a composer? <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, that sounds like a, an introspective thing, but anyway. Um, so the round robin, we can turn the round robins off. So if you just want one round robin, if you want machine gun, you know, you can have that. But then uh, two round robin. So you see, it'll just alternate between two. If you want four. Why you would want that, I don't know. But six. So you get rid of the thing. Now, if we move over to this, at the minute, we're just getting one repeat, which means when we push the key once, we get one. If we move this up to two, we now have a duplet. Okay, if we want it faster, we can change the rate up to a 30 second, not 30 second triplet, come on now. Okay, so we have a really cool sounding duplet right there. But the thing I like is if you're into the, the kind of uh, action style of using a trumpet, you could say, set it to 30 seconds and then have it be five. Da -da 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 -da. Oh, let's put it back to 16th. That is extremely useful for when you're doing those action cues. Like normally I'd have it down like that 90 or something, but then 30 seconds. Absolutely beautiful sounding. I love it. Jesus, thank you. Thank you for what you're doing. You're welcome, Chris. Thank you for the donation. I appreciate it greatly. So then we have this, uh, you know, obviously swing is... I'll put it on 16 so you can actually hear what that's doing. But obviously we don't swing it so much. I never personally use swing, but the accent is pretty cool. So, so the accent is only accenting the every other one. So if we put that like on a on like eight. So you see, you can do things like that. But one of the cool things I like is, so let's say that we want it to uh, build up, build up to uh, a downbeat. You know, like so. You can add a crescendo. You can add a diminuendo. So it gets quieter. And then these cool ones. So this will just accent the first note. Really cool for doing things like that. And then of course the last. So again, if you're doing the, uh, if you're doing one of those builds, you know, uh, to a downbeat. Jesus, there's a lorry going past. I absolutely love this feature and I'm going to be using the fuck out of it. 
And again, we can do the, uh, you know, the whole uh, staccato to portamento thing. So, you know, da da da. So what is it? It's my, it was minus one, wasn't it? So we can have like da da, and then porto be this note. And then the you know something like this so you can actually write these kind of cool uh patterns and it sounds kind of like they would be playing it and you know if it was a bit faster you know So I, I I really love the uh, the the way that it the the same thing I said for Jaeger in in a previous one. I love the way that there's consistency between the articulations. I wonder how the long sustain is on this one actually. Let me oh fuck I have to push enter now. So it's slightly off. You know, it's like the the uh, initial attack is slightly off, but the porto is perfect with the staccato. Beautiful sounding. Uh, so now let's have a listen to Sforzato. So this this just basically means it has like a sharp little quick at the beginning. And as the other one, we have uh, PPP sustain. Lovely sounding. Uh, there, tempo synced crescendos. They kind of have a, uh, what is it, like a, I, I want to say like Cuban kind of sound to them, you know? When they're up high. Nah, that sounded pretty cool actually. And again, tempo sync. So if I wanted to double the length so that it's eight beats. So here we go. Swell. Again, should you want to, you can double time it to two beats. Or half time it to eight. So now let's move on to the uh, extra articulations for the trumpets. So again, we have the waves. Oh. Wonderful sound, and then with the wide again, spreads it out wide. Pulsing beats. This is like the tempo sync rhythmic thing again.
So you want a bit of movement in there. And again, the wide is the same, but spread across the uh, stereo image. Uh, random flutters. Random flutters wide. Random staccatos. Cool, that's the extra uh, articulations and now the effects full mix again. So we've got clusters. Again, I like these kind of ones around this area. And of course we've got lower two. Cluster crescendos. Now they sound violent. I absolutely love the violence of these. Now the, the effects for these are mostly just, well, it is, it's, it's just clusters. Beautiful sounding. Now let's move on to the tenor trombones. This is actually one of my favorite uh, patches of the entire thing. Because it has the zim tone. articulation. What is it? So we go up to like here. As you can hear, they have the cinematic tone. And this was the point when I tweeted out yesterday, holy fuck, this sounds awesome. Because for the longest time, trombones have been too, in sample libraries, the trombones have been either too sharp or too dull. you play that I'd be like
absolutely gorgeous sounding. So let's go to the staccatos. You have to play it every time. <laughs> Sorry. But again, we've got the... So we have the repeat. So let's put it up to the five again. And let's... Da, 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 da. Let's put it up to a faster one. Absolutely love this feature. You know what I mean? So it just makes my life easier because I could program that. But I like the way that there's control to it, you know, so that I can get that idea down as quick as possible. So, you know, or I could just have the first note articulated. <laughs> Fucking love that. Okay, so let's put this back to one and let's listen to the Porto. love that tone let's see if this works with our um with our little thing here but we can bring this down i mean this should really be more like da -da 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 -da. let me just let me just fix this so it's more correct Dun dun. Da 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 da. Ba 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 ba. Something like that makes sense. It's a good little pattern. You see how easy that is to get like a phrase kind of set up? I mean, it's a shit phrase, but. And of course, because this is Portamento, you could, uh, you know, set up a little. Uh, You know, you could set up like a full uh, chordal section. Again, that sounds shit, but, um, you know, I'm rushing. I'm not rushing. I'm just trying to... Fuck, I love these trombones. <laughs> Again, Sforzando. I'm not going to explain what every one of them does now. I'm just going to say the name and then play you a bit because I've explained. Otherwise, I'll be explaining hundreds and hundreds of times the same thing. What is the chat room? Chat room, what do you think of the tone? So this is the PPP sustain, so just the quiet articulation. This is worth the price for the trombones alone. My fucking God. Uh, so again, crescendos, tempo synced.
be played up here. The crescendos are really cool. So the swells obviously are swells. And of course, you don't have to play the big heroic chords like, like I'm doing right now. Yeah. Oh, spooky. So that's cool. So that's the uh, that's just the default sounds for the trombones. Fucking love the sound of them. I don't know if you guys picked that up already, but those trombones are holy fuck, they're good. They just have the right tone. Like I said, in a lot of the other libraries, trombones tend to be either too harsh or too dull and muddy. These have like the cinematic sound of trombones. Like when I recorded uh, um at Air Studios for the first time I did my live recording, I was surprised at how trombones actually sounded. And they sounded exactly like this. They had the bite, but they also had the body. And usually they go one way or the other. These just have the sound of a live trombone section. Fucking love it. So at first, the lack of legato bothered me. Um, but then I realized when I write brass parts, I very rarely actually write legato passages. Um, I wish it did have legato, even if it was fake. I wish that there was a legato option. And hopefully they, they think of this for an update, you know, like if they go down the, the road of updates. I would love to have legato. But because the staccato to porto sounds so good, you know, this whole little passage here where you can go ba 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 You know, that that works so well. That's how brass tends to be when they play, other than if they're playing, you know, like some, you know, actual legato line. But very rarely do I write that kind of thing. So I realize that the legato isn't a huge loss for me. It will be for some people, though. Like, it's a shame that it wasn't included, but <laughs> they compensate for it with the other part of the library, which we haven't even got to yet. So hold your horses. So the pulsing beats again, just that tempo. And then of course, random staccatos. And yeah, as someone says in the chat, like they say this, uh, so Alex, what's that? Naled says the sustain patches play really well and still sound better than some of the dedicated legato in some libraries. And again, this is this is like where uh, the tone of a library can be more important than the playability. Sometimes, like the action brass or, you know, uh, cine brass that I use, there is a playability over tone. Actually, I like the cine samples tone too, but like, you know, playability and tone. Very rarely do you get both together for some reason. Uh, you either get the tone or the playability. And this one, I absolutely love the tone of, which actually means it's going to get a considerably more use than something which is more playable. It depends on what you're going for, but the tone of this, the, the way to look at it is if the tone is right, it makes my music sound good with me having to do less to make it sound good. Does that make sense? So it's like if you're thinking from a production standpoint, do I want to take this and make it play like a real instrument, but it doesn't sound, doesn't have the impressive sound? Or do you want the impressive sound first and then cover some of that lack of playability, you know, within the music? In the fog of war, all sorts of sins are forgiven. I think I heard Charlie Klauser say once. It's very true. Um, and of course, I have about 10 brass libraries. So I have legato in other libraries should I need it. As most of you will probably already have uh, brass libraries already. Um, you know, if you've got a legato you already like and you don't want to replace it, you don't need to. But if you want to add some cool sound, this is absolutely awesome. So here we go. Trombone clusters. Here we go. Go. 
By the way, if you guys hear clicks and pops, that's just because I'm streaming and playing at the same time. There isn't that much CPU load. I mean, this patch is 49 megabytes, <laughs> so it's not, it's not breaking my CPU or RAM or anything. So cluster crescendos. And again, these are tempo synced. So I can double time them or half time them. Cluster swells, again, tempo synced. So here we have uni clusters, which I assume stands for unison, which means notes playing together. Sort of. <laughs> oh, that's really cool, actually. Because they kind of slide into like an aggressive upbeat. Well, not upbeat, but like the downbeat goes kind of just... Uh, yeah. Actually, it went down that time, but okay. Beautiful. And then the same thing, but swells. Oof. Nasty. Okay, so now let's move on to... So again, atonal pedals. Which are these kind of, well, they're atonal, so they don't have a tone to them. Great if you're doing some, uh, some either action thriller, something like that, and you just want to set an evil tone. Anyway, so that's my favorite section. The, uh, the trombones, but let's move on to the contra trombones. Again, if you uh, miss the beginning, these little brackets around the instrument over here, this shows how many players are in each section. So we have four contra trombones. These go, these go deep. Love this shit. Okay, staccato. So this is good for doing like the uh, layers with drums, you know, getting that really. And again, we could put the repeats on. Let's put five so we have a downbeat. Beautiful. The Porto. And this kind of, these kinds of sounds, by the way, are really good at layering with uh, like low strings. They just bring out the, um, let me just load in a low string quickly. Oh, God. 